Shalom, shalom. It's your brother, Bob Rumya. Back with another lesson. Lord, we don't even be edifying. I want to start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Maharu Kakodash, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shah. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. And shalom to the 144,000 and the one third men, women, and children that will escape the judgment of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah. Just got a quick lesson. Um, uh, as you see on the screen, it says developing suspicious device have been s discovered in several New Mexico cities. So um, they're saying that they, they don't know if these are bombs or what, man. But it's suspicious different um, things are popping up around Babylon and Great, man. So you, you, you need to understand that we are entering into the time of Jacob's trouble, man. Civil unrest, civil war, all hell breaking loose, man. We're entering into that time. And I just got a couple of videos. Uh, it's pretty much going to go into what was the um, the decision from the uh, Supreme Court, man, to open the borders. So here, let me play the video, a couple of TikTok videos. And like I said, Lord, we're going to be edifying. You know, I'm not uh, really sure what has to happen in order to convince people that uh, we are on our own. This is the Supreme Court allowing our border to be overrun with people coming across without us being able to get their identification, without knowing who they are, without knowing where they came from, without knowing anything. The Supreme Court says it's okay. Folks, you really have got to wake up. We are not going to be saved by anyone. And let me reiterate, anyone but ourselves. Well, he got that wrong because the elect are going to be saved by Yahweh by Shem Shah. Esau Edom is not going to be saved. He's right about that, but the elect will be saved. Now, check this out. This is one of the guys um, that came across the border or, or trying to enter into the border. And uh, I seen on um, IG where a guy pretty much said this guy was um, uh, was locked up for 12 years, man, for, for uh, in, uh, as, I think it was Azerbaijan. But check him out, man. Check him out. I don't know who this guy is, but he seems to think he's somebody. He's my friend. If you are smart enough to know who I am, but you are really not smart enough to know who I am, I'm sure you're going to know who I am. You're going to know who I am. Very wow. Very easy. The entitlement. The entitlement. No, believe me. I'm much better than that. What should really concern you is why a guy that seems so educated, clean cut, would need to cross the border illegally. And they said that guy right there was one of those, um, I think it was Azerbaijan, I'm not for sure. But it's going to come out uh, who that guy is. But I, somebody had posted it on IG, like I said, but I don't have it in front of me. But uh, it's going to come to come to come out who that guy is, man. But you got to think if he's trying to enter into the border, and he, he said you're going to know my name. He has something up his sleeve. I would think. I was. I, I would think, but you know, it's not up to me. Um, I'm here to, to report what's going on through the spirit and power you have by Shem Yahweh Shah, and marry it to these scriptures, man, to give our people understanding of what times we're in. Because when it comes, there's no looking back. There's no time out. There's no break in what's coming. It's gonna be full fledged, all hell breaking loose, man. And that's the whole point of. The Lord having the men of the Lord on the highways and byways and, and bringing out these lessons to you, man. And putting prophecy with current events, man. Current news. So, as you seen, that guy was um, speaking boldly of who he was and pretty much uh, his stature. And as as, as he's saying that, it was a uh, protest in Columbia University, man. And they were sprayed by, I don't even want to say their names. He's going to say it. But you're going to see that things are picking up, man. Things are picking up. Things are not going back to what we knew. I say shit before, before the, the big disease that came out, man. We're entering into the time of Jacob's trouble, man. All hell breaking loose here in Babylon the Great, man. And I want to say fair use, fair use. This information will be used for educational purposes only. I will not be financially benefiting from this video. Just for financial and educational purposes only. 
So thanks to students for justice in Palestine and social media, the chemical attack reported by several protesters is getting a lot more attention. Columbia students recently held a protest and protesters started to smell this like really heinous odor. And several students identified this chemical as something called skunk. It's a chemical developed by the Israeli firm Odor Tech and employed by the Israeli military against demonstrators in the West Bank, according to the BBC. Aside from its stench, which has been compared to sewage and rotting flesh, side effects of a chemical include nausea, skin rash, and vomiting, according to a 2016 report. And according to the information that we currently have, the two individuals that were reported going around and spraying protesters with skunk were also Columbia residents who happened to be former IDF soldiers. And there's a few things about this story that I find very interesting. One of them being that the lack of courage of this chemical attack really shows you that racism and a complete and lack of human safety permeates the U.S. media. Because I remember that when an empty Wendy's got burnt down during some of the riots that broke out during the Black Lives Matter movement, it was national news. It was a national discussion. You had U.S. politicians coming out and calling people that were participating in the Black Lives Matter movement, whether they were peacefully protesting or rioting, terrorists. But we have two former Israeli soldiers who are using chemical attacks against peaceful protesters. There's utter silence. But now we're just really seeing how much influence the Israeli lobby really has over U.S. media and our policing because they invest so much of their time and energy policing and criminalizing black people the black experience and the black reaction to oppression the same exact thing that they do to the palestinian people and this is exactly why black revolutionaries and black i'm tired of hearing this dude black nothing man is no black nothing, they, and they can't be compared to the struggle that the, you, uh, the, the blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans have experienced in Babylon the Great. Those people are going to receive judgment regardless, man. Just like two thirds of our people are going to receive judgment regardless, man. He's going into black this, black that, and BLM, BLM, and that's irrelevant, man. What the hell with Black Lives Matter, man? Who cares about black Black Lives Matter, man? The hell with Black Lives Matter. But the point is that they are using chemical attacks here in Babylon and Great. And no one <laughs> is form or anything, man. Once you're part of it, you stay in it, man. Once you're a part of it, you stay in it. You, 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 it's like a gang, man. You don't get out of those, um, those, uh, um, I would say, those, um, those oaths you made when you, when you, when you go into the military. In other countries, they stick to their they stick to their oaths they made with their countries as well, man. So you seen the protests they had, and they came with chemical weapons, man, and attacked the people, man. And it was two two small had a army uh, soldiers, man. So you 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 can't tell me that the times we're entering into is not going to be, <laughs> man, a time like never before, man. Now you have never you would have never seen that I say ten years ago. It would have never happen. Now everything is basically spiraling, spiraling out of control, man. Out of Esau's hands, man. And we're warning you to wake up to what's going on, man. Wake up to this truth, because the time is running short, man. The time is running short, man. Things are picking up, and things you've never seen here in Babylon the Great are starting to happen. This is Second Ezra sixteen. And I want to start at verse 17. And it says, woe, woe is me, woe is me. Who would deliver me in those days, man? See, the time that we're coming into, you're going to have to have a savior, man. You're going to have to have a savior for the times we're coming into. There's no way you can't tough it out. You can't get no new weaponry. You can't uh, get all this bunker in <laughs> It's no time. You have no time to even store up these things, man. The only investment you need to be making in 
is in Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, man. It says the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, and that's what we're entering into, man. Great sorrows, great mourning, beginning of famine and great death, man. We're entering into these times, man, of great death. The beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear, man. So you know that World War Three is already, uh, this already been established, man. It's coming. And the nations have not declared um, World War Three yet, but on a low level they have, man, because uh, as, as the apostle was saying that they have, have different loopholes they have to go through with Congress and all of that to even um, to even um, go to war. So now we're seeing everything is, 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 is being put in place, man. What I've seen, um, America struck um, the Houthis again today. And also you got, what, this week, 90,000 troops are going to be uh, going to be uh, doing drills on Russia's border. It's, it's so much going on, man. It's hard to even keep up with it. But through the spirit and power of Yahweh B'Shem Yahushah, the prophets have made, the, the, uh, Yahweh B'Shem Yahushah have made the prophets aware of everything that's going on in the earth, man. And we're bringing it to you. The end of 18, it says, it says, what shall I do when those evils shall come? And we're telling you what to do, man. Repent. Because what's like I said, when it started, when this ball started rolling, there's no one gonna stop it and give you a break, man. There's not gonna be any timeouts. Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendments, man. So this, this, these things are being sent for punishments by Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, man. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. See, our people are not going to turn away from their wickedness, man. They're not going to turn away from their wickedness and repent to the Lord, man, because two-thirds are going to be put to death, man. Like it or not, believe it or not, two-thirds are going to be put to death. It's written. So it is going to happen, man. But like I said, you have to be you have to be prepared, man, mentally and spiritually for what's coming, man. Because the Lord put it on your spirit to seek him and for you to believe in him. This is Psalms 32. Psalms 32, and I'm going to start at verse 8, just down to 11. I'm, and I'm not going to make it long at all. I'm just going to hit a couple of scriptures. It says, I will instruct thee and teach thee the way which thou shalt go. And he hath blessed us to understand and blessed us to, to, to choose the right direction, man. And that's through him. Yahweh by Shem Yahushua. I will guide thee with my eye. See, the Lord is going to protect the elect and guide us in the way we should go, man. And he's telling us not to be like the other, the, the two-thirds of our people. It says, be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding. That's two thirds of our people, man. They have no understanding because he said, no matter what the punishments come, they still won't. They won't change, man. Whose mouth must be held in with the bit and bridle, lest they come near to, unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. See that? Many sorrows are going to be on two thirds of our people, man. He says. But he that trusts in Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, mercy shall compass him about. And that's what we're praying to be, man. Part of the hopeful elect, man. Trusting in the Lord, man. So mercy will be on, on us, and but sorrows will be on two thirds, man. It says, Be glad in Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart, man. Because we know the things that's coming on the earth is meant for us to be saved out of here, man. For us to be rescued by Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, man. For us to be redeemed by the Lord, man. These things are a blessing to us. When we see in World War III build, being built up, man, Jacob's trouble being <laughs> bring, brung to pass, these things we are rejoicing in, man. We get happy when we see the war is getting ready. Jacob's trouble, you know what I'm saying? The MOTB, the MOTB coming. 
We're happy in these things, man, because the Lord is going to have mercy on us, man, because we seek him, man. And he told us to rejoice. So we're rejoicing in the spirit, man, because the Lord has great things prepared for the elect. But two thirds of our people, great sorrows are going to come on them, man. This is Psalm 16, and I'm going to start at verse one. It said, preserve me, O power. For in thee do I put my trust. See, the men of the Lord, the elect, are putting their trust in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh We have no power to stop what's coming. Oh, oh, shit. Or do we want to stop what's coming? But the thing is, we have no power to stop our people from getting put to death. Your close family members, your friends, we have no power over that, man. So we're putting our trust in the Lord, man. The only way out. O my soul, thou hast said unto Yahweh by Shem Shah, thou art my power, Yahweh by Shem Shah, man. My goodness extended not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellence in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasteth after another God. See, our people are seeking another God, man. Even though we we prophesied to them, we stood on the highways and byways, we brought our lessons, we, we put our information, but they're still going after other gods, man. And the Lord says, it's sorrows coming to them. Verse four again, it says, their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasteth after another God. Their drink offering of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips, man. So they're not gonna even they're not gonna be able to pray to the Lord when all hell breaking loose, man. They're not gonna be able to pray to the Lord, man. Let's get this another translation just to make it even clearer. It says, Troubles multiply for those who chase after other gods, man. Troubles are gonna multiply on two thirds of our people, man. He says, I will not take part in their sacrifices of blood or even speak the names of their gods, man. And that's us, man, the hopeful elect, man, because we know sorrows and troubles are coming on people calling the most high Christ blessed, Jesus Christ, Christ, Ahia. We know sorrows are coming to them, man, because they call it another God, man. Good news translation. He says, those who rush to other gods bring many troubles on themselves. So we're warning you, man, to repent. I will not take part in their sacrifices. I will not worship their gods. And that's us, man. We're not going to worship their gods. We're putting our trust in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh man. We put all our trust in the Lord, man. He says, Yahweh by verse 5, it says, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh is my portion. It's like Yahweh by Shem Yahweh is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. And our lot's Lord willing is to make it, man. The Lord is going to maintain our lot, man. Being men of the Lord, being women of the Lord, man. That we make it. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. And that's the men of the Lord, man. We have a goodly heritage. But two thirds of our people will know their heritage in the kingdom of heaven, man. They have the down the side to, 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 to even make it to it, man. See what was prepared for them, man. See how we supposed to really be, man. Kings and princes on the earth, man. Let me just get a couple more. This is Jeremiah 10. And I just want to get the point in Jeremiah 10. I'm going to drop down to 23. Jeremiah's prayer. Oh, you how about Shimei Shah? I know that the way of man is not in himself, man. See, we can't will ourselves to do anything, man. And we know we have to be, you have, you have to be chosen from the foundation of the earth. But you don't know if you're chosen from the foundation of the earth. Because we, we didn't wake up saying, uh, well, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, from birth and say we, we're chosen people. We seek the Lord, man. And the Lord woke us up to this truth, man. And once we've found out this truth, 
we 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 trying to endure to the end, man. That's the whole point. It's all our whole purpose. But if you seek the Lord, you don't know if you're chosen or not, man. It says, it is not in man that walketh to direct his steps, man. So the Lord has you slated for judgment, or he has you slated to be saved. It says, O Yahweh by Shem Shah, correct me, but with judgment, not in thy anger, least thou bring me to nothing, man. So the Lord is going to chastise you, man. He's going to judge you, but Lord willing, it's not in his anger, man. Because these people are going to experience the anger of Yahweh by Shem Shah, man. He says, verse 25, it says, pour out thy fury upon the heathen that know not the know not thee. So like, let me read that again. It says, pour out thy fury upon the heathen that know not the know thee not. And upon the families that call not on thy name. For they have eaten of Jacob and devoured him and consumed him and have made his habitation desolate, man. And that's Esau, Edom, and these heathens, man. But two-thirds of our people have joined unto him. Let me get one more, man. I'm going to end it, man. Let me get Psalms. But the thing is, I just want to bring this lesson out, man, because we, we, we're getting to that point, man. It's not going to be It's not going to be turning back, man. It's not going to be pretty. Because things are speeding up, and the Lord is moving his hand over Babylon the Great, man. Time is running out. Time is truly running out, man. This is Psalms 14, and I'm going to start at verse 1, Psalm of David. It says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And that's two-thirds of our people. They call on Jesus, and especially Esau Edom. They call on him, but he, he, he has no power, man. He says, they are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. Yahweh Shem Yahushua looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek power, man. And you know that for a fact, man. <laughs> Esau Edom has not did, he's not looked for the Lord, man. And two-thirds of our people, they, they, they aspire to be with him because they're following after his philosophies, his church system, which is ran by the Roman Catholic Church. They, they follow him in every, every, legislation is signed, they went right with them and behind them, the Edomites, you know, I'm speaking of like the presidents, you see the Jakes, but any, any legislation they come up, they think they're being helped. But the Lord is going to put an end on that, man. He's going to put an end to this, man. Because they're not seeking the Lord, man, and, and, and the time is, is running out, man. Verse three, it says, they are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon Yahweh by Shem Yahweh And Esau Edom has no knowledge, man. He doesn't know the Lord. He does not know the Lord is pissed off at this place, man. What was one of those WEF uh, guys, he was saying that we can get God as angry as he want to get him. <laughs> man, that was a, they have no clue, man. They have no knowledge. They have no, no understanding, no knowledge of the Lord, man. He says, there is, <laughs> there were they in great fear. For power is in the generation of the righteous, man. See, the, the Lord is dealing with the elect. He says, ye have seen the counsel of the poor. It's like you have shamed the counsel of the poor. And that's what Esau Edom has done. Because Yahweh by Shem Shah is his refuge. And see, we're standing boldly calling the name and power of Yahweh by Shem Shah, man. And we're seeing the Lord putting, putting it on the spirit. And they think they're doing this, man. They're opening up the borders and letting all these people in. And we, we know this is this is biblical prophecy for the Lord to let them in, man. We, we, the Lord is taking this place down from the inside out, man. It's all strategic by Yahweh by Shemel Shah. But they think they're doing it. You know what I'm saying? You got your, um, your, um, your uh, what's his name? Um, damn. Uh, the Turkish, the Turkish uh, small hatter. Damn, I forgot his name. Maybe it come back to me. But yeah, they flood Babylon the Great, man. 
They're using all these nations to bring these immigrants. And they're coming from every country in the world, man. So the Lord is done with Babylon the Great, man. He's setting this place up for a great fall, man. He says, there were they in fear, therefore, slock it, let me slow down. Verse five again, it says, there were they in great fear, for power is in a generation of the righteous. See, the Lord is in a generation of the elect, the righteous, man, that's, that's seeking him. Ye have shamed the counsel of the poor because Yahweh Hashem Yahushua is his refuge. And that's what he thinks he's doing, man. He thinks he's setting this NWO and he's going to put the children of Israel back in slavery again, man. Basically trying to steal his birthright back. But it's over, man. The Lord has got him in a, in a snare, man. It says, Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion when Yahweh Hashem Yahushua bringeth back the captivity of his people, man. Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. See, the Lord is, is, is finna bring this, this, this man down, man. This is end of his, 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 his rulership to ever have on the earth. He will never have rulership on the earth again. And he's bringing Babylon the great down, man. His cash cow, his cash cow and his military power. Because Babylon the great is his military power and his cash cow. And he's bringing it down, man. And you got to say the water you have about Shem Yahushua for being merciful unto you to let you even receive this, man. This is Revelation 18. And, um, and I'm starting at verse 5. It says, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and power have remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, man. And double unto her double to her works. He says, in the cup which she have filled, filled to her double, man. So Babylon the Great is finna receive double, man. He says, how much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. And that's what's coming, man. Sorrows, man. Great sorrows are going to be in Babylon the Great, man. Great sorrows, man. So the Lord is telling you to get this. He's telling you this place is finna get double, man. He says, for, for she has said in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. And that's the pride of Esau Edom, man. They think they'll never see sorrows. They're setting Babylon the Great up to be destroyed and to set their NWO up, man. And they, they don't think no sorrows are going to come with that. And they continue to forward their agenda, man. And, and we hope they continue going with it, man. Move faster because as soon as they get these <laughs> dominoes in place like they think they got them, the Lord is going to send his wrath upon it, man. Verse 8, it says, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day and that's coming fast, man. Her plagues are coming in one day, man. It ain't going to be a long, drawn-out thing. It's going to come in one day, man. All the dominoes are going to fall, man. Yahweh Shai going to crack them clouds, and that's going to be ball game, man. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall, utter, she, <laughs> and she shall be utterly burned with fire. And we know what that fire is from them thermonuclear missiles, man. For strong is... Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, power, who judgeth her, man. Babylon, the greatest fit to be judged by Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, man. Just like he judged Sodom and Gomorrah, man. But this place is going to get double, man, for what they've done to us. It's going to get double, man. So Lord willing, it was edifying. I'm going to end it there. Shalom.